Welcome back to another episode of the Dr. Supercoach YouTube. You're on with Pig Mentality, and I'm back to give you my captain recommendations for round four. The round three is over. There were some big captain scores from the likes of Gorn or Heaney, and there are also some pretty underwhelming scores from guys like Butters and Bontempelli. Round four is gather round, with all teams heading to South Australia to play footy. Uh, this is music to my super coach ears, as Adelaide Oval especially is generally a high-scoring super coach ground. As I give you my recommendations, you'll see that it is one of the favourite hunting grounds for many of our elite super coach players. This week, we don't have any teams on the buy, which means no automatic loophole option. So make sure you, you take the time to have a look at your own squad and have a look at when you can loophole. So this may mean that you have to take a VC early in the round before your players lock. Last week, I spoke about VCing your projected highest scoring player. So the guy you think will be the highest scorer in your team, that's who you generally should try and VC in my the way I play. But that's probably not possible this week, especially for those of us who have Livingston uh, from West Coast as our loophole. He plays on the Saturday, so he actually won't be that useful for looping kind of unless it's the first few games. So for me last week, I projected Tim English to be my highest scoring player. So I used the VC on him. And he was on track for a really big score. Like he was looking like he was going to get a 150 quite comfortably. But then he rested forward in the fourth quarter when the game was in the bag. It was a bit disappointing, but he still managed a 124. And I took that as my captain's score. I'll generally say take, everything, take anything over 120. So now we'll go on to the vice captain. So like I said, because we a lot of us have the West Coast loophole or an early playing loophole, my three vice captains I've found are all in the early games. Um, so that gives you a chance to VC them and then have a look at a captain after that before your loophole locks. So number three, Dan Houston. Dan has a career average of 117 against Essendon from his nine games he's played against them. That's easily his highest scoring matchup. In fact, his second favorite matchup is a 98 average against Carlton, so nearly 20 points less. So he just loves playing against Essendon. His last three meetings with the Bombers, Houston has scores of 156, 122, and 120. If you couple this with the eye test of, in, of, of Essendon in recent weeks, which to me has shown a bit of a lack of accountability and defensive running to stop those loose, you know, winger halfback type roles, I think this is a perfect matchup to target a high ceiling VC player. Some recent scores against Essendon from players that cover you know, that kind of cover the D50 kind of up to the inside 50 areas, so between the arcs and along the wings. Riley Bonner scored a 104 on Essendon last week, despite having a nearly uh, record-breaking amount of turnovers. Errol Goulden scored a 149, and Massimo D'Ambrosio scored a 122 early in the year. So Essendon are giving up points to these players that kind of start towards the back and then make their way forward and kind of run through the wing and have shots at goal. So... That's what Houston does. He loves playing the Bombers, so he's a great VC option. Number two, Zach Butters. So Zach really let his owners down last week, uh, especially the ones that captained him with a 98. But that does come off the back of a 117 and a 175. This week he comes up against Essendon, whereas I kind of said with uh, Houston, they're not really known for their accountability or shutting down opponents. Butters averages 107 against the Bombers over his career. That's through six games. And much like Houston, this is his favourite team to, so to score against. So both Houston and Butters love playing the Bombers. Scores of 109, 125 and 104 in their last three meetings. They don't really scream captain material for Butters. But under the Friday night lights that gather around and kind of in their home state, I believe that Butters and Port Adelaide will be looking to make a statement. Essendon have also given up some big scores to inside midfielders in recent weeks. So they gave up a 112 to Warple, a 129 to Heaney, and a 126 to Steele. Um, and I believe that Zach Butters is kind of a tier above a lot of those guys. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a big Butters score here. And I think he's, he'll be the one I'll be looking to VC just because of the fact that I don't have a loophole option playing too late. So I'll have to do someone early and I'm looking at Butters. If I had Christian Petrarca, he would be my number one vice captain option. So Truck has been a model of consistency this season. He's averaging 118 to start the year. He's only got and he had a low score last week with a score of 97, but we know Porto a very hard matchup for midfielders, so that didn't surprise me. 
This week, he plays the first game of the round, and he's a great VC option. The last time that Petrarca played the Crows at Adelaide Oval, he scored 189. In fact, Adelaide Oval is by far his highest scoring Supercoach venue. That's for grounds that he's played more than five matches at. So there's a, there is a couple that he's played less and scored more, but data points are five or more. He loves playing at Adelaide Oval. And look, the Adelaide midfield has been soundly beaten in all three games to start this year. And if that continues, I think we can expect to see a Christian Petrarca masterclass to kick off Gather Round. So if you've got Petrarca and 18% of the comp do have him, um, I would be looking to VC him. Then we'll go down to my pod vice captain. Um, and I definitely recommend vice captaining just because he plays early in the round. But you could captain, and I think he'll be a really safe option, is Lockie Neal. So Neal is flying under the radar this season. And that's likely because he's only played two games. But scores of 120, uh, 112 and 129 against two normally difficult midfields is a pretty solid start for Lockie. This week he comes up against North Melbourne, who were one of the easiest matchups for midfielders. In this corresponding matchup last year, so against North at Gather Round, Lockie had 176 points. Add scores of 105 and 156 in their previous two meetings before that. And this is just a matchup that Neil loves. Uh, Lockie Neil grew up in South Australia, and it, ha- it has been documented that he often has good scores when coming home to play in his home state. He's only owned by 2% of the competition, but this pod VC could catapult your weekend in the right direction. So I think using a VC on any of those four guys I've just mentioned is a great option. Uh, and then I'm gonna now going to give you some, I want to consider safe captain options. To fall back on. Some of these will probably score higher. I think they have the potential to score higher than the VCs. And in an ideal world, I'd actually like to VC one of these into the other, but because of the loophole option, that's not a possibility for me. So number five, Marcus Bond and Pelly. This recommendation hinges on whether the Bond is fully healthy or not. Last week against West Coast, Bevo played Bont predominantly forward and he was actually really lucky to scrape past the 100 mark. He had a couple of late goals that really boosted him over that. Some are saying that this is because of the ankle niggle he picked up the following week. So for this one, I'd just say wait uh, and listen and see if you hear any, any news out of Footscray before making a decision on this one. If the Bont is declared fully fit and back in the midfield, then he's captain material. Scores of 146, 113 and 109 in his last three meetings with Geelong look good. But it's also his his record at Adelaide Oval that really excites me. A career average of 124 at that venue from 10 games. So Adelaide Oval is Marcus Bondempelli's highest scoring ground. Add this to the fact that Geelong are the second easiest matchup for opposition midfielders over the last 10 games and Bont should be very safe if fully healthy. I will give you a backup plan here um, because if Bont isn't fully healthy, if he still has a niggle, if he, if he misses the game or if they kind of just say, yeah, we're managing him, we'll play forward, um, I wouldn't be confident on him, but I'll give you a, a backup guy just in case, and that's Tom Stewart. So uh, if Bont is dealing with a niggle or looks to play forward, I'll replace him in my recommendations with Tom Stewart. Tom has scores of 124 and 127. In his last two meetings with the Bulldogs, they were both last year. To add to that, Stewart is coming off scores of 134 and 99, but that 99 was essentially in three quarters uh, because he missed nearly a whole quarter with concussion protocols when he came back on. So you can couple this with the fact that the Bulldogs are the easiest team for opposition defenders to score against. This really could be a lucrative matchup. So the Bulldogs have recently given up scores of 120 to Jeremy McGovern 102 to Sam Collins and 103 to Sam May, 101 to Tom McDonald. So there's a few like low tons in there, but those scores are all well above those players' averages. And I even recommended VCing Jeremy McGovern last week because of this matchup against the Bulldogs. And Tom Stewart's a lot better than Jeremy McGovern. So I also expect Stewart to, to rocket past his average on Saturday night. So he's my backup if Bont doesn't play as kind of my fifth recommendation. Number four. We go to Tom Green. Averaging 140 through his first three games of the season, Tom is looking like one of the premier midfielders of the competition. Granted, he has had one of the easiest draws to start the season. This week, he plays against Gold Coast, 
who, you know, they gave up 124 points to Laird and 114 to Crouch in round one. And then in round round two, they gave up 136 to Bond and 115 to Liber. So they're not really being very restrictive at the moment, Gold Coast. It is only a small sample size, but it does show there are points available for midfielders against the Suns. Green didn't play uh, against the Suns last year, and he's actually only played against them two times in his career for scores of 147 and 92. He's also never played at Adelaide Hills before, so that's something to, that we don't know about. So this recommendation is based on riding the Tom Green hot streak rather than being backed up by extensive data, so that's probably just why he isn't higher on this list. I think it would be great, but I, I normally like a bit of data to back it up, but sometimes you can just trust the hot hand as well. Number three, Tim English. So Tim was on track for a 150 last week before he got bevoed and before he got sent to rest in the forward line for the whole last quarter. And as I said, that kind of occurred because the game against the Eagles was well and truly sealed by three-quarter time. It kind of looked like they wanted to rest Liber and English and uh, Bont and um, it also looked like they wanted to give Sam Darcy a bit more ruck time to see what he could do. That shouldn't happen in a closer game. If it's a closer game, I expect their three big guys to be in and amongst it. Last week, DeLong trusted Toby Conway with the ruck duties, and Conway got destroyed in the hit-out battle, 42-18 to 18 by Lloyd Meek. Now, English is not as good at winning the hit-outs as Meek is, but it does mean that he should be able to get more hit-outs than kind of he, do- he does on average. So English himself isn't really a great hit-out ruckman, in terms of he doesn't win the hit out in a lot of his uh, contests. So when he gets a matchup where he can win more hit outs, it really does boost his score. And based on last week, Conway is someone that you know you can get the hit out against, even though he's a big lad. Additionally, the Geelong midfield is struggling a bit and his hit out should be able to find his defenders, which we know hit outs to advantage give huge super coach points. Plus, you know, I don't really expect Conway as a new player to be able to keep up with English around the ground, especially at Adelaide Oval. So I am recording this on a Tuesday afternoon before the teams come out. So this recommendation does come with a few caveats. This is one where we really should kind of keep an eye on the team sheet to see who's playing. Because if Reece, if Reece Stanley comes back into the Geelong team and Conway's dropped, then my confidence in this pick probably drops a little because... Um, when Stanley and Blixars have played together as a double, kind of they have been mediumly restrictive. But if it's English versus uh, Conway, then I'm really keen for this. Also worth keeping on what happens with Rory Do- Lobb and Sam Darcy, because Rory Lobb's dominated the VFL in the past weeks. Sam Darcy was okay last week in the AFL, but didn't do that much. So if Lobb comes back into the team and replaces Darcy, then I'm then my confidence in this goes up because we know what English and Lobb do together. Essentially, English does all the rucking generally when he's on the field. If all three of English, Lobb and Darcy play AFL, <laughs> to be honest, I don't, know, don't really know what to expect. So just keep an eye on the team sheets for this one and react accordingly. If it is English versus Conway, which I'm hoping, then I'm really confident in this one. If it's English versus Stanley with maybe Darcy still in the team, I'm a bit less confident, but keep an eye on it. Number two, Luke Ryan. Luke has started off the season as the second highest averaging player in the league, thanks to scores of 165, 127 and 130. I don't think that changes this week. He comes up against Carlton, who are one of the easiest teams in the league for opposition opposition designated kickers. If you look up designated kicker in the dictionary, you'll see a photo of Luke Ryan. So to paint the picture, Carlton have given up scores of 128 to Harry Sheasel. 134 to Nick Vlosten, and 118 to Harris Andrews to start the year. Last week, I recommended VCing Sheasel due to this matchup with Carlton, and that's when he scored that 128. Luke Ryan is an even bigger seagull than Sheasel, and this could be such a nice score that I'd be comfortable using the VC or the C. Normally, someone like Luke Ryan, I usually recommend in the VC because I don't trust them with the captain because they can put up an 80 or a 90. But this matchup's so good that I'm not really worried about that. I think he's going big. 168 in their last matchup, if you want even more assurity. Number one captain is Isaac Heaney. So Heaney's gone from two weeks ago. I had him as my pod and like vice captain only. Last week, I had him as a pretty firm, solid captain option. And this week, he's my number one captain option. So my faith in Isaac is growing every single week. 
Uh, and Isaac is leading the super coach competition for points scored. That's how good he's going. He's the number one player for points scored this year. Granted, he has played an extra round uh, compared to the Frio duo who are right on his heels, but his Heaney's, Heaney's start cannot be understated. Scores of 144, 136, 128 and 148 to start the year paint the picture. This week, he gets to match up with the West Coast Eagles, who were the easiest team for opposition supercoach players in 2023. To the Eagles' credit, they have been a little more restrictive in 2024. They've only given up two scores uh, over 130 in their first three games, whereas last year they were giving up 130s all over the place. But with the form Isaac is in and the style in which he plays, I expect him to be able to rack up the contested possessions and clearance with ease, and I think he'll put up another big score. So very confident in Heaney. What I will be doing this week is I, because I have Livingston as my loop, I can't VC kind of, I would love to VC an English into a Tom Green, but I can't do that. So I think I'll be VCing Zach Butters. And then I'll captain English if it's English versus Conway. But if Stanley comes in, I might go away from that. And I'll probably see Heaney, I think. But team sheets might decide that one a little bit for me. I did also have a little bit of a request last time. Because our teams, it's the start of the year and because our teams are still so different. You know, I've given nine players, or actually ten here because I gave a bonus Tom Stewart. Given ten players that I recommend could, you know, push that 120 or more and go big. But I did have some people say... Because our teams are so different to start the year, I might only have one of those players or two of those players. And can I, can I, can I go through like each game and say who I think would be good in each one? And I might just do that for the first few rounds. I think once we get right into upgrade season and especially towards the buyers, I won't do this. I'll keep to my nine recommendations. But it probably is fair that you know a lot of people teams wouldn't have all of these players and might only have one or two. So... In the first game, Adelaide versus Melbourne, I'll just go through them really quickly. Like Petrarca, I said, is my number one option. Clary has an awesome record against Adelaide, but he doesn't look like he's back to his best yet. Gorn could be a VC, but Riley O'Brien's actually quite restrictive at times, especially for guys that rely on winning the hitouts for points. Dawson and Laird are options, but I still don't really trust the Adelaide midfield. Like They haven't been winning any games. I think they will shake it up soon. I'd like to kind of wait to see where the shake-up lands and who's good before I trust those guys. Uh, Brisbane and North, I talked about Neil's a really good option. Dunkley could be an option, although he hasn't been in that great of form. LDU, I think he got confused and thought he had the buy last week because he just didn't show up, so I'm not really going near that. Cheezle, probably not. Brisbane aren't that great for defenders. Then we go to Port Nessonen. Um, as I said, I've recommended Houston and Butters quite firmly. I also think Rosie could be an option if you have him for a VC. Essendon merits on a really, really hot streak, averaging 130 to start the year. But Port are one of the hardest midfield matchups in the league, so I'm probably not going to go there. West Coast Sydney, uh, there's no one on West Coast I really care about. Sydney, you could look at Gordon potentially as a VC, but I would. I think I'd much prefer Heaney just with the inside play style that he does in his contested possessions. You could also look at Brody Grundy here. West Coast Ruckman have been giving up a lot of points to uh, their yeah, their opponents, so Grundy could have a field day here. He hasn't really impressed me that much to start the year, so um, I'm I'm not going to go for him. I think there's better, higher scorers, but Grundy could be an option. And we look at Freo Carlton. Luke Jackson could be an option if it's just Tom DeConing playing because Tom DeConing has been losing the hit-out battle a bit. Um, Luke Jackson could have a bit of a day out. But, yeah, I'm not so sure. I just I just back some of the other guys before him. You know, Sarong is on an absolute hot streak, but Carlton are one of the hardest midfield oppositions. So I just it's not a great matchup. I probably wouldn't go there. We look at Bulldogs and Geelong. As I said, Bont, if he's playing midfield and he's healthy, great option. Libba could be a great option, but he got subbed out at three-quarter time. Do you really trust Bevo? I'm really keen on English if it's English versus Conway, as I said. Uh, Tom Stewart, I've mentioned, is a really good option for defenders playing against the Bulldogs. And actually, in that same vein, Max Holmes, you would probably never VC or see Max Holmes, but... 
I think he should he should score well. Gold Coast GWS, uh, as I've mentioned, Tom Green, I think he's just in such hot form that you could look at him. If Jared Witts plays, I haven't heard much about his injury. If he plays, then Briggs is a really easy ruck matchup. So Witts actually could be like a really safe 120, but maybe not. Tuch Miller, Anderson, Rao, those guys are all really good, but GWS is actually quite a hard midfield matchup. So you could do it. I just wouldn't have as m- I'd have more confidence in, say, a Tom Green than a Tuke Miller. Richmond St Kilda, actually, this one is really good. I think uh, I probably could have recommended Jack Steele as a captain option. I think he's a really safe bet. Richmond have been absolutely giving up points to everyone, especially opposition midfielders. Steele's in hot form. So, yeah, Jack Steele's a really good safe. I just think he's probably like a safe 120 fallback. I don't think he's necessarily got that 150 in him that we would like, but he's really safe. If your VC doesn't work, fall back on Steele. Collingwood Hawthorne, Nick Dacos, probably not. Like this is the Finn McGuinness matchup that everyone's been worried about. Finn didn't play last week. He got dropped, but he also dominated the VFL, so he could come back in. I don't know. You'd have to be very, very brave to VC Nick Dacos against Hawthorne and Finn McGuinness, but if you want to do it, go ahead. So hopefully that gives everyone a bit more of a thought, uh, a view into what I'm thinking. You know, I've given you my 10 that I think are really good options and could go 120 plus quite comfortably. I also then just really quickly reeled off each matchup and why I haven't selected some guys or maybe a couple of guys I missed that could be good. So hopefully in all of that, you can digest that yourself. Have a think about who you've got in your team. Uh, make yourself a VCC plan. Like I said, really make sure you work out who your loophole is going to be and when they play because you're going to need a VC before then, uh, which for me, you know, screws me up a bit because it means I can't VC who I really wanted, but that's fine. I'll have a crack. I think it butters into English or if uh, Reese Stanley's playing, I might veer away from English and go to a Heaney, but I still would be pretty confident in English either way. So that is all for this week. Uh, like I said, follow me on Twitter at pig underscore DRSC. Uh, we've got the weekly podcast coming out all the time for Dr. Supercoach and our Patreon is going off, our Slack's going off. So if you want to get more involved, you know, look up our Patreon page. You can join if you want or come and uh, join us in Slack for a fee as well. Either way, um, I'll be back next week to tell you about round five. Hope you all have a really good week this week. Uh, and I hope this helps and you're able to absolutely nail your VC or your C options. Mm-hmm.